Why do you think happened on the way to the unboxing video? Welcome back to the shop on the channel. And what I meant by that is I, I did, uh, honestly, I did film, record, whatever, uh, unboxing video, and there's the box. 110 pound box. Anyway, I did, I did, I honestly did. But I came in here to get the, the SD, SD card out of the camera, and so I can start editing, and I, you know, they spring loaded, so you just pop it, grab it, get it into your fingers, and take it out and go do your thing. I pushed it in, my, my finger slipped off of it, it snapped out, of, it bounced out of the, I mean sprung out of the slot and bounced off my hand and it's over there somewhere. Somewhere it's over there. I'll probably find it in a year. So I did unbox it, but here it is, partially assembled. This is a Jumitsu um, 6050 uh, plus CNC machine. It has a, about a 20 inch, 20 inch by 24 inch um, working surface here. Surface. Well, it's actually shorter this way because uh, it goes to the edge of the spoil board. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, first impressions, this thing is beefy as all get out. It's built like a tank. All of these parts are half inch aluminum. Um, the, the, uh, the, the guides, the, the bearing guides for the uh, Traverse X, Y, and Z are extremely robust, heavy units. Um, and uh, these, are ne these are NEMA 23 motors, They're very robust. These will go 3,000 millimeters per minute, and I'm never, ever going to do that. That would be just dangerous. It comes with a spindle, so I'm not using a router this time. It's a 300-watt spindle. It's small. If it doesn't work out, they have a bigger one I can get later on down the road. It comes pre-wired. Show you that more of that in a minute. It has limit switches, like my other one didn't have limit switches, so you can do uh, not bang into stuff. Um, some of the neat machining things they did, because this is built by a CNC machine, and then machines making machines. So there's a pocket at the top of this upright support for the gantry, and a slot down here pre-machined into the upright so that everything fits together exactly where it needs to go. So there's a pocket for the gantry. You can't put it anywhere else. You can't put this anywhere else on this crossbeam. Um, the gantry minus the motor and the spindle came pre-assembled. The base, all the bearing surfaces and all the stuff, guides and everything, came assembled, except I had to put in a lead screw before I put on the, uh, the Y motor, the Y uh, uh, stepping motor. But that's, that's, that's the big stuff I had to do, and I will follow my sword and confess that I actually put this on backwards the first time around. And so I had to pick it up, take it off at the bottom, loosen everything up, put it all the way around, and put it on the right way around by myself, and it's heavy. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, like I said, everything's pre-wired. I'll show you the harness in a bit. Uh, it comes with these wonderful spoil board sections, and you could actually put something else on here if you wanted, but so the spoil board is uh, what looks like, uh, it's not three quarter MDF, it's millimeter, but it's MDF. The MDF is screwed in from the back and this mounts on from between the back plate to the front plate like so and when you put them together there's T-tracks. So everything's going to be T-tracks. I started using T-tracks anyway, so that, that'll work fine. So this goes here, another one goes here, and they butt right up against each other and then you've got a T-track down here to clamp things down, which is very cool. There's dust shields that go here and here, but it, it, it narrows the, the width of the, of the working surface. And in order to do the mortises and the sl through slot on the uh, tables that we make for the looms, I have to go in between the, the gantry supports like this, and all of these mortise and tenon, these mortise joints, are within the, the working surface in this, in this dimension. So we can do those very nicely. I bought their dust shoe. Isn't this cute? A little dust shoe? Dust shoe. Um, it's a, I haven't tried it yet. People have given it mixed results. I'm going to design, I'll put a link in, a link in the description, I think, about um, the, uh, 
what I'm looking for, looking to do. I'm going to design what's going to, as a, it's known as a um, floating shoe. So it remains on the work surface while the, the gantry, uh, the, the Z axis goes up and down within it. And that's a test. So that's attached to the gantry and it's fixed and it comes down, hose out the back, a, a hole here for the spindle to get the work, the, the cutter down to the, to the workpiece. And I, I've seen these work and I've seen these operate and they get pretty, pretty damn good results. And it also, you also uh, can uh, just lift up the tool, the, the, the spindle to, to change tools. So that's my little, little picture there of that thing. Yeah, that cute little dust collection thing. It's a little tiny port here. Um, it comes with all the tools you need to assemble it, a set of uh, metric ball and hex, hex keys, of course the spindle wrenches, got to have the spindle wrenches, even these have been bead blasted, I think this has been shot peened and then anodized, because it's got a really nice smooth non-stick surface and that feels like shot peening. It comes with all the hardware like I said, and interesting when you have hardware that needs washers and, lo and split washers, uh, flat and split washers, the screws that you need for mounting the motors, which requires those washers, has the washers captured on the screw. So you can't, don't have to go hunting for those. Nice, nice little touch. Um, I'm going to put a link to three videos from a gentleman in uh, Australia. Roger Webb, I think his name is. You see it when you see his videos. He does a really great three-part series on assembling the mechanical parts, assembling the electronics and wiring parts, and then setting it up and testing it for the first time. I was going to link his videos any of a couple of others because I wasn't going to do a full unboxing video. I was just going to do bits and pieces. But there it is. It's a big one. So let's go um, and look at the rest of the parts that are going to go on this, including these uh, over here on the table saw. Let's start with the controller. It's a big-ass controller. I mean, it's bigger than the one I had before. Anyhow, it starts out with a switch for 240 or um, 110. So whatever region you're in, whatever voltage is coming out of the wall. The front panel, let's come down close and take a better look at the control panel, the front panel. It has, a, this switch over here is for laser or CNC, so it's basically one switch. Speed control, kind of obvious. I think the top speed on this is like 20,000 RPM. And it's got a, a reset button, a pause button, and a resume button. And this is the panic, panic button. Uh, if something goes wrong, you hit that, it instantly shuts it all down. On the back, of course, we have the connections. We have uh, X, Y, and Z motors. X, Y, and Z, um, a laser, which I'm not going to use right now. X, Y, and Z limit switches, and the Z probe. And the Z probe is the touch plate. You've seen me use that on my other, other uh, CNC. This is exactly three quarters of an inch uh, tall. And when you're setting things up, you get the X and Y set by I. And then you put this, you raise the uh, bit up, put this under the bit, connect the alligator clip to the, to the bit, and hit the test button, and it comes down and tests this spot. And now it knows exactly where three quarters of an inch above the workpiece is. That's kind of like the zero point for the Z axis. So when you start the job, it, the computer knows, oh, I know my workpiece is below this three quarters of an inch point. It starts there. Uh, you can use the paper technique is where you take... And you bring the bit down and you put some paper under it, you slowly traverse the bit down until it starts to drag on the paper, and you, you, you've got your Z pretty much set that way as well. It came with um, a uh, very nice, hefty, shielded USB cable for your computer or your laptop, whatever you're going to use to drive it. The USB drive in here contains a uh, candle, which is the controlling, controlling software to control the machine. Uh, manually or whatever, and you can move it and traverse it and zero it and all that, and with with candle and then start the job and stop the stop the jobs in candle, um, and it also contains the drivers to set up the COM port from your computer to the controller. Um, now I have a laptop I'm going to use in this temporarily, and what I'm going to do is on the table I'm going to build I'm going to put a fold down uh, little little table that when I want to come in and work on the machine, I pop that up, it locks in place, and put my laptop on there. That's kind of temporary because I'm eventually going to buy a uh, Windows 11 um, or 10 Pro uh, tablet. Now, you don't need a Surface, which is $1,000. You can get a good one, a Dell, 
for uh, about 250 bucks refurbished on Amazon. And it's a Windows 11 and Windows 10 Pro. It does everything you need to know. It doesn't have to be a big, hefty thing because I, it's only gonna drive this machine. It's all I'm gonna use it for is this machine right here. I'm not gonna do anything else on it. All my stuff is done on a PC in my office, editing and whatever. Okay, power club plug, you gotta have a power plug, power plug, power cord. This is the block to hold the, the um, Makita uh, router, if you use the Makita router. These are those dust shields I was telling you about. They go on either side, which I'll remove to do the, the table for the looms. And this is, ugh, here we go. These are the drag, the drag chains. That's what they're called, drag chains. And these are the things that they go on the machine. And, and as the machine traverses, they do this, like that. It comes disconnected at the center point for shipping, but you can easily connect that back together. Uh, it comes pre-wired. Everything is labeled. And this is the business end for the controller. This is the end for one of the, one of the uh, um, stepping motors and whatever. And this is for the other stepping motor and stuff and, and, uh, and uh, limit switches. This will go on later as well. Now, when, when the gentleman who came and got my old CNC machine, uh, which I gave away for free, he got the, the base for it and everything, he brought a gift. Let me quickly show you what that gift is. This is a nine-quarter piece of what he called chestnut white oak, but it's, white, it's a species of white oak, slightly different coloration. Now, this is the pith. This is the center of the log, and the pith is right here. From here to here, and from here to here, is quarter sawn. So I'm going to remove the pith, debark and remove the pith, and, and put these away for a while because this is 35% moisture. So it needs about another year because it's one year per inch, and it's been, it's been drying for about a year. So it needs about another year to be down to a workable uh, moisture content. So that's where I am right now. Uh, the legs should be here today. I've ordered them for, the, for this. I'm going to get some wood, build that thing, hang the controller in there, build a drawer for all the part, the tools that I need in there as well, and then put the dust collection underneath. The next video is probably going to be all of that being happening. So, um, until next time, do great things out, out of, build great things out of wood, and um, something I'm not doing right now.